What's up, y'all? It's CJ Moto. Just got back from ride to the store. Got a little bit of Moto Vlog action for y'all. I put that new Shinko 244 tire on the back yesterday. It's the, uh, they call it the Shinko Dirt Boy. And they're very inexpensive, but they have excellent reviews. And it's a taller tire, and it already gave me a few extra miles per hour top speed. Because anytime you have that taller diameter, just for those of you that don't uh, might not be aware, if you have a taller diameter tire or larger diameter wheel, um, it, it, it depends on just the tire uh, from tread to tread. So if you've got more distance from tread to tread, you're going to get more top speed out of your bike. And that's off the back wheel. So you could have you could keep the same smaller front front wheel on the bike and just put a, a taller back wheel, and you're going to get more top speed. And then, uh, yeah, it feels really good. I'm going to be putting another one on the front tire. It was not a big deal changing this out. Just keep an eye on when you loosen up the 17 millimeter lock nut. Remember, there's actually an Allen key on the other side. I was cranking on that thing, cranking on that thing. You have to hold that Allen key at the same time. So that's something to be aware of. Otherwise, you're just going to be, it's going to be like, man, this thing's not getting loose. And then the front wheel, remember, you got to take that cap off of the axle. And then you got two pinch bolts. Always, always remember to loosen those pinch bolts up. And then the axle will slide right out. Um, and then obviously when you put it back in, make sure that you don't do anything with those pinch bolts until you pinch down the actual axle itself from left to right or right to left. Then after that, pinch down the pinch bolts. Otherwise, it won't clamp the wheel down all the way like it should. Make sure you get yourself some good... Tire irons off Amazon. I got these ones. That's what they look like. You'll be able to find them if you just look for them on there. Inexpensive. You want at least three of them. You want to work one iron, the next iron, the next iron. Pull the middle one out. Go to the next one. Pull the middle one out. Go to the next one. That's what I did at least. It's not too bad. Take some patience. Um, if the tire starts to stick when you're putting the new one on, if you start to get it to stick when you're getting to the, the wheel there, just go ahead and take it off your bench or whatever and kind of try to compress the tire on the other side of the wheel and it'll release some of that tension. But anyhow, let's go on this ride and see how it went. Let's get this show on the road. Got the battery all charged up to 100% last night. This thing's just been so much fun. I've never rode an electric motorcycle, electric mountain bike before in my life. And it is just so cool. If you guys get one of these, you will not regret it. It is just so much fun. Hardly any maintenance. I did tighten up the chain last night. But other than that, it's just been adding the stuff that I added. Um, and I'm happy with mostly all the upgrades that I did. I'm trying to think if there's anything that's not really necessary for you all to do. I mean, none of it's really necessary, but it does help. The stock tires are actually not that bad, but I've already noticed a difference with the Shinko 244 Golden Boy. Just having it on the rear, it feels more stable. Um, I tested it in the wet, and it locks up a lot less in the wet weather. So it's just going to be, if you're going to be riding on the street, I would recommend the 244. There's other options as well, but if you look it up, I mean, it's tried and true. That tire's been around for like 40 or 50 years. People love it. Uh, KTM riders, dual sport riders, enduro riders. You can have the same great tire that they've had, and the coolest part is it's very inexpensive. Just don't forget to get some IRC heavy-duty uh, tubes. I personally don't believe in tubeless. I just like having that heavy-duty tube in there. And anybody that says, oh my gosh, the stuff you read on forums is just hilarious. Don't get that tire, it's heavier, you're gonna lose acceleration. This bike has over a hundred foot pounds of torque. Like, I have not noticed any difference in acceleration. Um, that electric motor does not care about that. So get the tire that you want. Don't go so wide to where you have to cut the dang tread down on it, on the sides. I mean, who wants to buy a tire and then cut the tread down? Do you guys know what the tread's for? Um, yeah, the tread has a purpose, so if you cut the sidewall down, you're destructing, your, you're buying a brand new item and then you're basically destroying it, in my opinion. Um, you want to keep this stuff safe, 
And the cool thing is that Golden Boy says right on it, it's rated, I think it says it's rated to 90 miles an hour. So that's just, that's a little extra added, you know, bonus right there. But yeah, um, skid plate was good. Honestly, the stock skid plate it came with, unless you're going to be off-roading, just bashing the heck out of it, it's probably fine. But the version 2 skid plate, the stainless steel one's very nice, but it is probably three times the weight. So honestly, I probably would have just stopped, kept the stock skid plate. Um, the foot pegs that I got, definitely I would upgrade to a wider foot peg. If you go back in some of my videos, I talk about which foot pegs to get. And the grips, and hand oh my gosh, the Pro Taper handlebars. Get the Pro Taper 3 inch, the Pro Taper 810 handlebars. Just do it. Just do yourself a favor. I compared them last night to the stock bars just held the stock bars up to it i never even bothered riding this thing with the stock bars but the stock bars are almost straight and i just don't like the bend in them just do yourself the favor and get the pro tapers you will not regret it don't forget to get some grips and make sure that you put some rental grip glue on the grips also you just put a nice uh, coating and work fast because that stuff dries very quickly um there's a guy just walking around with his shirt off you know the street point we do what we want um, anyhow, the suspension, another thing you read in forums, I'm sorry guys, but the, the DNM forks and, and shock, they're awesome. Go on mountain bike forums, downhill mountain bike forums and read about the DNM quote unquote doesn't, they call it the does not move suspension. This suspension moves folks and it moves a lot and it's adjustable. It's enjoyable. If you go on these downhill mountain bike forums, people love the front fork for the money. It's a it's a huge bang for your buck. And the cool thing is, everybody on the forums get not everybody, but a lot of people on the forums are getting rid of them, getting Fox shock. So even if you have like, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about the other shocks this bike has came from with, but I love the inverted design. But if you're looking to get one, oh, it's time to fuel her up here, baby. Let's put some fuel in her. Oh, I forgot forgot she's electric she's electric -na 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 -na. anyhow where was i the stock shocks uh you can get one cheap hit up the uh emoto bros they both switched theirs out i think they're still trying to sell their dnms so you can probably pick up the dnm forks for like 300 bucks from somebody off one of these forums just because everybody thinks they have to have that fox suspension which, honestly, I think the DNM looks way nicer, and I think it performs just as well for 95% of the stuff you're going to be doing. How many of you guys are going to be going downhill Red Bull rampaging on your Suron? Well, if you are, then, you know, buy the $1,500 suspension. If not, give this stuff a chance, because it's a, it has adjustable rebound, compression, and dampening. You can put air in the front of the shock. But anyhow, I rest my case on the suspension. Um, I love it. I love the DNM inverted front fork. It's the nicest looking fork on the market for this bike, hands down. Um, I love it. It has those little tube covers and stuff. That's cool as heck. But let's get Good back morning. to riding. Here we are at the local gas station, the Murphy's. Make sure you get your Murphy's loyalty rewards points. Start an account with them and you will get money off your gas and stuff. Very nice people. The lady that works here is very nice. Just a pleasure to do business with Walmart and Murphy's. Thank you. Anyhow, here we go. She looks like she's living her best life in there. And she's very friendly. Very, very hardworking woman for sure. Do I get a double bag? And then we're going to go ahead Plastic. and unlock this bike. I got that new wallet. Oh, man. Thanks, Dad. That thing's sweet. We're going to go ahead and unlock this bike back up. we got to double bag these groceries, so... Just be patient with me here because I kind of fart around with these for a while. And I already talked about it. I hope you all don't mind. But I, I do the audio on these videos after the fact because it is impossible to get good quality audio while you're moto vlogging. You can do decent. And I mean, I'm not saying maybe it can be done. But I would prefer just doing it from the comfort of my office. So I have time to sit here and reflect on important things to let you all know. Let's get back to the ride. Took that back fender off, by the way. It's the flimsiest thing ever. It's just super flimsy, and I kept on touching it with my butt. Like, I thought it was part of the seat. The seat's 
Oh, the seat is very comfortable. They've up, they've updated the seat on it, and it is very, very comfortable. And if you want to ride around with a child on this bike, it's perfect because they can sit right between you, sandwiched in between your legs, hold on to your pro taper bars in between where your hands are on the bars, uh, like in between your brake and uh, brake and brake lever. You know, you got your front brake on the right on this, by the way. Let me know in the comments, is it normal on a downhill mountain bike to have your front brake on your right, or do they normally do it the other way? Because I really like how this is, because if you've ridden a motorcycle before, you're going to be used to having that front brake on your right. And then all you got to do is get used to the clutch now being your rear brake. So just always remember, clutch, rear brake. Okay? But anyhow, they can sit on front of you on the seat there, and then they can actually put their feet, um, they can rest their feet right on the subframe it's really cool about three to four years old that's like a perfect way to ride this thing we went on a 15 mile ride yesterday my daughter and i and she had an absolute blast she loves this thing so nice just getting kids outside and doing stuff with them other than them sitting on the video game all day because uh life is a giant video game and cj moto is playing it all the time the video game called life but anyhow i hope you guys are all living your best lives I hope that you're enjoying these things, and if you ever have any questions, I'll give you an honest opinion whether or not you need to do the thing, in my opinion, upgrade-wise. Um, there's lots of cool stuff to do to these. Do you need more power? No. Um, do you need to put a 60-tooth rear sprocket on it to have ultimate wheelie torque? No. You have wheelie torque with what's on it. It has a 48-tooth and it does wheelie. Easy. Um, anything, like I said before, I'm going to go smaller on the back sprocket. Um, I'll probably have one larger sprocket for, for torque, and then I'll probably have a 44 tooth, something like that. This uh, Shinko tire, like I said before, added a few miles per hour here, so that's really cool. Added two to three, um, somewhere like that, maybe even four, but at least two to three miles per hour. So it actually gets the stock speedometer. To where it's reading accurately because when you get this bike it says if, when it says you're doing 25 you're really doing about 20 when it says you're doing 30 you're doing 25 and so forth so it's about five miles per hour off i use the gps app that's very accurate i tested it in my car so now that i put the golden boys on there i'm only reading like a mile per hour to two miles per hour slower than my speedometer says i'm going and you can't change the speedometer on the bike it reads off the motor so what that means is when you change sprocket sizes unless you find that perfect sweet spot and if you want to find that perfect sweet spot i'm telling you guys put the shinko golden boys on there the 244s and then change from like a 48 tooth to like a 46 tooth and you should be right on the money but actually that might even get you to where you're going a little faster than it reads so i really think the shinko boom look at that <laughs> So fun doing little stuff like that on this thing. Man, those BNM forks didn't even soak anything up. Almost broke my spine. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's probably about as close to accurate as I'm going to get right now. Because I have a feeling when I switch to the 44, um, I'm probably going to be going faster than I'm saying I'm going. But, but, yeah, I mean, if you got a little more speed, you're going to get where you're going a little faster. And your battery's going to get you a little farther because you're able to get there faster. Uh, lower RPMs and the lower RPM range will be going faster where you have more torque so you can even any throttle range you'll be going you'll be moving quicker and getting where you need to go with with less um, exertion on the motor because this thing's got so much torque I really don't think it cares let's do a little off-road here look at this this stuff's slippy I gotta be careful it's all wet so I'm kind of feathering the rear brake around here because it kind of keeps that tire tracking when you're riding motorcycles if you're new to this kind of stuff guys in situations like this right here do not hardly ever touch that front brake you will get put on your ass so quick ask my dad i had a suzuki bandit 1200 back in high school and it had dual front disc brakes and he he's used to like gold wings and stuff and he grabbed some front brake and he went down and that bike went down he was okay and everything but he had to fix my bike um, but anyhow, yeah, situations like this, stay away from that front brake. You will be on your face thinking to yourself, God damn, I wish I would have listened to CJ Moto. But yeah, use the back brake all you want. Slide that rear tire around. Have fun with it. I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.
I love y'all. I'm enjoying the heck out of this thing. Keep your eye out for more Motovlog action. Don't buy a Super 73 RX. This is the real RX right here. We're still at 93%. I hope y'all really enjoyed that video. I appreciate you stopping by and watching. Please um, like the video, subscribe to it, share it, support my channel, um, watch all my videos. I love y'all. Um, positive vibes to you. Sorry, Super 73. I didn't mean to shout out and say that this is a better bike, but uh, this is a better bike. I'm glad I went with it. I don't regret it at all. And the best part is it showed up not damaged perfectly in perfect condition because they go with a real freight company. So shout out to Luna Cycles and shout out to Suron. You guys, your engineers killed it on this project. CJ Moto's just making it better. But you guys gave me a baseline that I could not beat. There's not even anything this thing needs to comp compete with on the market. That's why they only make it in black. Because uh, <laughs> if you don't want a black Suron, then you're just going to have to settle for something that's not as good. Anyhow, peace.